everyone, my name is Tony Derrick. Welcome to the How to Craft Network, the channel where you can come and get lots of inspiration. I hope you're all well, as normal. I always ask if you're all okay. I get often asked, why do you ask if we're all all right? We're here every day. I know, but I just like to check in. I just like to make sure you're okay. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, do click that subscribe button that gives us a wider reach and puts us out on the other platforms so other lovely crafty friends can see us there is also a little bell as well which will give you that half an hour notice should you be out and about let's say hello to our friends straight into it today i've got lots to tell you about so hello enid roseanne kirsty irene wendy roxy lee carol ann angela sue kirsty welcome to the channel everyone so today in studio i'm going to make a tiny card now tiny and i mean tiny so i'm going to go small small so five and a half by four and a quarter so small small usa size we need to do some smaller cards i need to do big cards i need to do jelly plates i need to do scrapbooking i need to do painting i need to do everything there isn't enough hours in the day <laughs> so thank you for joining me everyone the weather isn't great is it overcast a little bit but we are promised some lovely weather throughout the week i'm going to get straight into crafting today i'm busting a gut to play so what i want to tell you about before i do do that is i have the name of the fabulous giveaway i'm just making sure you can't see the lady's name anywhere no <laughs> i have the giveaway name for this lovely giveaway which we did last week if you remember and i've also got a name for the lady who won the card that we did in the live htcn show too it's all good stuff you have to stay to the end though i'm keeping you here um keeping you on the channel so you don't disappear and go somewhere else we're not allowing it you're only allowed to come and watch this channel you've got to stay here i know where you all live uh that's it just stay <laughs> people are going to be saying you're on one today let me just have a sup of my coffee kirsty's saying oh god i can't go smaller than a5 it's so tough isn't it isn't it tough you look at the image, you're like, well, what am I going to do with that? I know. Oh, it's sunny in Devon. Oh, gosh. Let's just pop this to one side so it doesn't get knocked over. Come on, guys. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. So I've got my Eureka here. So what I'm going to attempt to do is, you know how we do painted images on cardstock? Well, wouldn't it be lovely to have an image? that was watercolored but on black so it looks like you've painted it onto black but if we did paint it onto black you wouldn't be able to see the image would you so i'm going to do a little bit of a technique where we black out the outside of it so blackout we'll do a, a blackout let's call it a blackout card now i'm not going to stand here and say it hasn't been done because knowing my look you're all going to say tony everybody does that okay so we'll just call it a blackout card and then at the end you can tell me if you've done it before or if you're not because i am not the inventor of these things as you all know as much as i stand here giddy keeper thinking i found something new it's not always the case hi wendy hi vicky hi shirley hi roseanne oh my gosh Kirsty, lovely to see you all right let's craft so i have a piece of watercolor card here look at this look how small it is Oosh. She says, oosh. And today I'm going to use my leaves. Now, I feel like the weather's changed. I don't know if anybody's in agreement, but it feels like we're in, coming into autumn. I know we're going to get a strike of hot weather, but the temperature, it seems to be getting a little bit dark, although, you know, we still are in the month of August. So I'm going to use these lovely leaves because these are one of my favourites from Pretty Penny and you get the dye, but I'm not using the dye today. So... I'm going to use both leaves. Normally you would just use one, but I'm going to mix it up and use both. So I'm going to create myself a heat embossed background first. Now, when I say blackout, I mean truly blackout. So you can't really blackout with watercolours because, you know, layer upon layer upon layer. If you kept going nine and ten layers, you might get the blackout. But I'm going to use something different today in studio, which is brand new to me. I have no idea if it's going to work. And this is the great thing about studio we all bounce off each other i could see in all of your lovely comments with regards to the jelly plate oh tony i was screaming at the screen to tell you what to do and i did see the comments so i have popped some comments on so if you did pop a comment on the jelly plate video go back and have a look i have replied <laughs> so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pop this lovely sort of design up the top here and then i'm going to take the second one i'm going to place it down on the base 
I know, isn't it weird? Some of us that have been making smaller cards are now making bigger cards, and some of us that are making massive cards are now making small cards. It's crazy, isn't it? But it's not a bad thing. But I'm going to go, let's do a land. Shall we go landscape today instead of. Yeah, I'm going to do a landscape today. Let's think about where I'm going to pop my design. I'd like. Hmm, I might, I might do it twice, so I'll get a bit of the design up here, a bit of this design down here, one here and one here. Shall we go for that? Might push it in just a touch. There we go. Let's, let's see how this goes. So I'm just going to pick up those stamps there, and I am going to heat emboss, and I'm going to do them in gold. So I'm using that anti-static bag. This is going to get rid of any of that moisture on there. Hi, Mark. Lovely to see you. Um, and I'm sticky ink pad. So I'm just going to ink up that stamp. And we'll stamp this down now. It's on watercolour card, so I might have to do the press twice because of the texture in the watercolour card. Hopefully we get a nice coverage. So that's that one there. Let's go to the top left here. It does feel weird to make small cards. I'm going to have to get used to making them, though, guys. So I'm just going to do it twice just to confirm the design on there. <laughs> the I Mark, talk about one extreme to the other. I Marla, then straight down to a small card, I know. One extreme to the other guys. Well, let's just grab some cardstock to catch that powder. Hopefully I've got a lovely print on there. I can't really see it to be honest, but we'll see. I'm just going to use some gold embossing powder. Oh yeah, I've got a lovely print there. I will tap off the excess in a second. So to prevent any sort of mess, I am going to heat set these two first and then and then I'll go in and do the other two. So let's just turn this on one second, sorry. Let's just get our gun hot. Julie makes six by six cards. That's like a um, ha happy medium maybe in the middle. My go to cards are 8x8, eight eight, Donna's saying. Yeah, Wendy, they do do 5x7 and Slimline as well. They do. So I'll get my gun hot. I'm just going to heat set this. On this watercolour card. Now, the, I'm using these leaf stamps today, but of course, if you have floral stamps, they're going to look awesome too. So that's the two. So let's just pop that aside. Have I heat set that properly? Like, oh, I missed a little bit there. There we go. And then let's just move this powder. And let's just finish, complete the design on our artwork. So I'm just going to bring it back into play here. And then I'm going to anti-static. In fact, do you think if we just twisted our artwork? No. I was trying to do a shortcut there, but no, don't do it, Tony. So I'm just going to use the anti-static again, and I'm going to go top right, bottom left. I'm just probably not going to go as far in with the design on this one, maybe. Lots of anti-static on there because it is a watercolour card. Don't want it to grab. So let's bring this one maybe. I think we'll get this, the, the leaf part of that on there. Like so. Let's 
get these two on. So again, I'll use that sticky ink pad. I'm going to do it twice just to make sure. There we go. And then we'll pop our gold on. a blow get rid of all the excess and then if you have any sort of like flecks of gold floating around anywhere just take a dry brush or just a dry paint brush and just brush any away that you're not happy with so a little bit there so despite me using that anti-static bag um it has still gone in other places so just be mindful you may still be i think it's, it might be the watercolor card to be honest but just be mindful of that. Keep your project super um, crisp and nice. I've just knocked a bit of embossing off the corner of that leaf. I'm just going to pop it back on because that will frustrate me. There we go. And let's heat set these two and then we can get on to the technique side of things which is cool So there we go, lovely, lovely, just heat embossed round the edges just to give us that beautiful design on there. So let's tidy our station and then we can move on to the fun part, which is, well, it's all fun, isn't it? But, you know, the creative colour, because we all love a bit of colour, don't we? So let's set that aside. Move this out of the way. So normally... Um, just grab my walkers here. Normally what we would do is I would show you how to do like a wet in wet technique. So I'd wet the whole of the leaf and then I'd drop some random colours in there. So that's like, that's called to or referred to as the wet in wet technique. So you're dropping wet paint into wet water. Whereas today I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of do the, well it's meant to be easier but I find it harder so it's called the glazing technique so basically you layer build so you do one you dry it off you add dimension you dry it off and you layer build and the terminology for that in watercolor is glazing so that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to lay some color in all of these not I'm not going to wet the card first I'm just going to lay some color so I'm going for autumn colors I'm just going to paint in the colour first. So because I've used that gold, it's going to act as a bit of a resist, which is cool. That's very helpful. So if you have got a little bit of a shrimp sh tremor, shemmer or a tremor or a shake, can't put tremor and shemmer together, it doesn't work. <laughs> I can't even say it, look. A tremor or a shake, then this technique is cool with the heat embossing. So I'm just layering that first layer of colour down on all of them. I haven't dropped the colour into wet water like we normally do. I'm just popping that first layer of colour down all over. And then on these two, let's swap it out for the sort of ochre colour here.
And then once we've got the colour lay down flat, we'll dry it. Like so. So I've got one layer of colour down. Perfect. So let's dry it. <laughs> Marilyn's eating a lunch so she can't chat. So that's dry. So this is where the glazing sort of idea comes into it, where you then take your next colour, whether it be a thicker consistency of the same colour or another colour, and you start to just build it on top and create a little bit of dimension. So this time I'm going to take a little bit of the orange and we'll pop a little bit of like the brown in here, maybe make it a different colour. And then you can build on top of, so you can then go into the veins of the... leaves and start adding sort of dimension and colour. So I'm just flicking from the centre out there, nothing fancy. So I've got total control of this because we're doing sort of the glazing idea, whereas with when you're dropping colour into water, you sort of like can't control it, it does its own thing, which is quite cool because it's random and it's very forgiving. Whereas with this one, I've got total control. So I've already got that layer of dimension in there. Let's add some dimension to our other ones. So I'm just going to take maybe a darker colour on this one and just add some brown to those sort of veins. And if you're not like happy with how, how it's going or where it's going, just dry your brush off, wet it, take the excess water out and pull it back. You see that there? So just blend those lines out if you're not a fan of those heavy lines. Right, so, so let's just add some more dimension to these ones. I might pop a little bit of green in these as well. And then the last one. But you could absolutely take your time and um, build those layers on there. So that's layer two. We'll do one more layer. Might add a bit of green this time. Let's add some brownie greeny colours. So this is our third layer, guys. So let's start with this one. So maybe add them into a different location on the leaf. So I might add some green to the tips here. Oh, so, you know, just have fun with them. It doesn't hurt, does it? Just to add that bit of colour. pretty with the green on there too I think let's add a bit of green into this one too so maybe just on the tips of the leaves but if you are doing a pretty flower you're going to stick with the colors that you know work well together you know just have fun with it that's what it's all about might add a bit of green to the center here see that there so they do look a little bit random Some green down one side. Just on that one, I'm not going to do it all. Just a little piece on that one, and then maybe a little piece on this one. And I think we'll leave that there, like so. They look quite cool. 
So let's just dry these off and then I'll show you the blackout element which I'm talking about. So, if I was to start now try and mix my black from here, you know, my black here, and pop it on, I'd have to probably do three, four, five layers to get it totally black to make it look like a black piece of card. So I have here this um, pigment ink, which is those pigment inks in the nail varnish bottles. So your watercolours, you can see through basically. That's how you get that lovely, fluid, soft, very forgiving design. Where pigment, you can't really see through it. You can still layer build with it and you can dilute it down, but it's less opaque, okay? So I thought, she says, let's just have a look. It comes with a nail varnish um, tip. Can we see that here? So these are by Seth Apter. They are the eyes ink range, but Seth Apter tends, I've watched him and he tends to tip them out into a palette and paint with them that way. Whereas I thought, well, maybe because we've got that brush in there, we could paint the background in and then push it into the areas with our um, paintbrush. So I'm going to go straight on, hopefully, as close as I dare. And then I'm going to push it into place. I'm just going to go around the one for now as, as close as I dare go. And I can see instantly this is going to be better than trying to do the layer building with my watercolour. So I'm just going to pop that on there and then I'm going to take my brush, which is not going to be saturated. I'm just going to take it into the design. Let me just move everything out of the way and concentrate here. So I'm just painting around that lovely flower leaf. And because I've used the heat embossing, which is brilliant, it's sort of acting as a resist as well. So that's cool. So that's helping me with the painting side of things. So I just need to wet my brush a little bit there. Now you can see how differently that paint sits on there. Can we see that there? I struggled to move that a little bit, so I'm going to add some more. I think um, Seth would probably just pour this on here, and I am going to when I get to the middle, but I'm not confident to do it around my leaf. But I'm getting the black out, which I want, which would be incredibly hard to do. So I'm just going, going to go around this one and then let's get some around this one and then we'll fill the centre. What I'll do with the centre though is I'll tip the ink onto the card. I'm sorry I'm not looking up. I can't see questions. I hope. <laughs> just till I get round these leaves and then I'll... I will look up, I promise. <laughs> It'll be totally worth it. I know it's taking me a little bit of time, but I know it'll totally be worth it because people will wonder when this card's finished, how have you painted those lovely, beautiful leaves onto black cardstock? That makes sense. And I'll hold it up and the heat embossing looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm just... Carefully going round the leaves. And then let's do the other two. And then we'll fill in that centre. So um, these, I feel like this pigment ink is more like a gouache, but in a water form. You know the big gouache we have. I could do with a smaller brush there.
you all know what I mean, like the gouache that we paint with from the Maya. Roxy, they will, they'll really pop when I've got the whole thing covered in black. You watch. You watch. And they do. I'm just thinking now, this he does this um he does this paint in a navy as well. That would look so cool. Let's just go around this last one here. And then I'll tip the ink on. I'll do what Seth does, probably ruin my card light, but you know. What's the worst that could happen? It's a piece of card. I'm just going to open my design a little bit now. Frustrating. Very therapeutic, if nothing else. But to get this depth of black with your watercolours, <laughs> it would be far, far more time consuming. I can reassure you with that one. I've got a bit of a shake going on there. That's because I love it so much, I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> what am I like? Ooh, can you see that shake? My gosh, I promise you I don't drink. I promise you. And there we go. So I'm round all the four decorative elements. Now, shall we just try and paint it on? I mean, it is a paintbrush at the end of the day. And then any uneven spaces, what I'll do is I'll drag it out with my brush where I'd not quite want to go with the... Tip it on, shall I tip it on? Oh. <gasps> oh my God. Well, that's what Seth does, so... If Seth can do it, I can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Oh my gosh, it's quite square. I feel like I'm playing with jelly plate again. <laughs> you just know this is going to get covered in white splats just to make it look really arty, don't you? And then anywhere where it's sort of diluted a little bit, I'll just add a bit more dimension. I'll get in with that brush. I will look up in a second, I promise you. Making sure I'm getting that whole area covered because it's looking awesome and I will hold it up when it's dry. Now, I would say you'd be able to do this with your alcohol pens. However, you might get those lines. You know, the lines with that frustrate. Now, I'm just going to just push my colour around a little bit better. Just get into those nuts and crevices where it's still a little bit. I can still see the card through just. So I'm just pushing. Drying quicker than I can get it across. Just looking at the camera now just to see where I've got white. Well, let's dry it off and let's just see if we need to add to it or if we don't. I think we'll get away with it though, guys. By the time I've added some splats, which will draw your eye away from any patches I may have where I've not quite filled in those gaps, maybe because I'm a little bit scared to get too close to the, to the design. 
But my gosh, these leaves look so good in the gold embossing. And I'll show you in a second. Let's just dry this off and see where we're at. Yeah, so these inks, as I was stating there, they work on everything. Fabric, uh, glass, MDF, metal, plant pots. Emma does them on plant pots. Right, so it's, it's, hmm. I was going to splash it to death now, but I'm not. I'm being patient because I have another, te another th thing where I want to go with this. You could use black acrylic, acrylic mark, yep. I think you could, yeah. You might just have to do a second layer. But yep, absolutely, if that's what you've got in your stash. Now I'm just making sure this is absolutely dry. I'm going to run it you'll see in a second what I'm going to do I'm going to do it through my die cutting machine in a second but I need to make sure it's absolutely dry sorry for me um me bobbing down <laughs> yeah have a go with your acrylics if that's what you've got in your stash why not Oh, that's surprising now i'm blasting off like it's not dry it's completely dry but it has a shiny finish so that's interesting isn't it it is dry yes it is dry how how strange it has like a it has a shiny finish how bizarre and it looks it looks cool, but I was drying it as if you know it's not dry because it's still shiny, and I'm wait, expecting it to go matte when really it were never going to go matte because that's how it dries. So the next thing I need to do is I have my nesting rectangles. These ones, these are available on the web if you haven't got them. But I'm just using one of the rectangular dies, a smallish one from the centre here. Now you've probably got rectangles anyway. So I'm just going to grab my die cutting machine here. I'll just get my plates sorted because they're, they're not right because we've had our embossing folders, haven't we? So let's pop that one down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop my artwork onto here. Now, which way do I want it? That way. It will go this way. And then I'm just going to grab our centerpiece here. I'm going to take an aperture out of the center. I'm going to grab my tape. <laughs> it's like watching paint dry. I know, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Hopefully, this won't um, tear my artwork. I'll just get rid of some of that stick. So, I'm just going to centralise that as straight as I possibly can. Hopefully, it will stay put. Let me just get another piece. It's not wanting to stay put at all. Sorry for the head. Hopefully that'll stay put now. So let's quickly run it through before it decides to bounce off the page. I'm just taking that aperture out of the centre with a rectangle die. Now you could use any shape die. Interesting finish, Donna. I know. Full of surprises. But it just, it goes just back to everything I always say. That's straight, yeah. It goes back to everything I say, you know. You never know unless you do it. You try it. Go try these things. 
Now I hope this doesn't tear my artwork. Please don't tear. Oh, that's perfect. Careful taking your tape off, guys, at home. So we have our aperture, our artwork and our aperture, okay? So what we need to do now, is on this aperture here, I have a sentiment, which I'm going to heat emboss. This one here, make sure it's the right way up, yeah. I'm going to hold it in place with my magnet. And I have um, Be Your Own Kind of Beautiful from one of my favourite ones, another one from Pretty Penny, which is these word sentiments, which you probably all got. There we go. Be Your Own Kind of Beautiful, the bottom one. And I'm just going to pop this straight in the centre here. Straight as I can without it all curling up. Keep it straight. Yeah, that's fine. And then I'm going to heat emboss in white. I'm just anti-static because I don't want it to stick to the black. If it's tacky at all, it might, it might grab. Hopefully not. And then ink up that stamp. And I'm going to do this in. Now we cut. Shall we do it in gold or white? Shall I heat emboss this sentiment in gold or white? Give us a shout. It's like actual nail varnish, it is, isn't it? So, shall we go gold? We go keep with our flowers. Wendy, well done, Wendy. You were the first one. Gold. Let's do it. I was thinking gold too. I promise. Gold. Oh, everybody said gold. Oh, one white cletty. Gold, gold, gold. Okay, let's keep it in theme then. Let me just take a dry brush and just get rid of all that excess powder. So it's stuck to that tape that we did. <laughs> Let's dry heat set this one then. Gold, 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 everything gold. And I think you are all right. That looks nice. Be your own kind of beautiful there. Really pretty, hey? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to glue it or tape it onto a slither of gold. And I mean a really thin border of gold. And this is going to give us like an inlay effect onto our card itself. So I'm just using a tape pen here. But make sure you use tape and glue at home. Give it a bend, come on. And then I'm just going to pop it onto this gold and a tiny, tiny border. And I'm just going to pop to the side and just quickly cut it. One second. Make sure it's straight as you possibly can so it looks pretty. And then we have a lovely sort of, there we go, look, it looks pretty on that gold. Really pretty, doesn't it? So let's get our card made. So I have a grey top folding up card, which I've trimmed down, but I am going to do landscape today. First of all, we need to cover this in some splats, don't we? I need some white. Where's all my white? Have I got, oh, I've got my gouache. There we go. Let's get some white on here. I'm not going to do it on the word panel, just on our back panel. Now, if you don't like the splats, stay away from the splats. So just very loosely, I'm just going to pop a few little white specks onto the back. Because these are pretty 
So if you haven't quite coloured that background in and it's a little bit, you've missed a little area, say, or something like that, don't worry about it. Because when you add those white splats, it sort of takes your eye away from what's going on in the background and brings your eye to the foreground, which is the white splats. They're very forgiving. People think, no, you're going to ruin your project by adding the splats, but they don't. They just accent or highlight. It takes your eye off another area of your card. So let's quickly dry this off. Nola needs another trip to the shop, 103 miles for some ink. <laughs> oh my gosh, Nola. Well, we had a fabulous day on Saturday in the shop. I had some lovely ladies come visit. There we go. I think we're good to go with that. So let's get this card put together. So this piece of card, this watercolour card, is the same size of my cardstock because I just didn't want a border today. I felt like, you know, let's not have a border. We don't always have to have a matte and layer border. Let's try and have something a little bit different. So I'm just going to, not with that tape pen, I'm not. Have we got another one? Hopefully this one might work. I don't, I don't know why there's anything left on this one either. Oh, there is. Nope. <laughs> and the next one has this got anything on it let's try i can't see no let's use glue <laughs> three tape pens later let's use glue oh it has got a little bit on there actually let's have a look We are talking about coming to say hi, coming to the shop. Yeah, it'd be lovely to see. I know it's, I know it's a, a travel for some of you, but we do have people. One lady travelled two and a half hours on Saturday. Like popping for your groceries. For me, is that two and a half hours? <laughs> so let's just make sure my design is the right way up. See. I would have done that wrong there. Did you see that? I'm just going to take my design here, pop it straight onto the top of this card. Hopefully I've not put too much glue on. And we'll just let that sit and grab a second. Yay! You should get a minibus. Come and I'll put tea and cake on. <laughs> absolutely straight so no border today no border at all let's just pop that under my eureka i give it a push down so i get it flat yes carol i do apologize these some of you will probably get an email about cancellation of an embossing folder It is um, holes. It is in a taxi five minutes from the train station. I have reordered more. So frustrating, I understand. I don't want to blame TV and stand here and bad mouth about creating craft because these things do happen. So I have ordered more. So let's hopefully. Oh my gosh, this is looking so cool. And then this piece here with that gold trim, now we can pop it on some pads. I'm just going to pop it totally flat so it looks like we've got that gold inlay. Okay, just make sure that that's stuck. And then we'll pop some glue in here. So totally flat here, but you could pop pads behind if you wanted to. And then you can 
sort of match that design back up. Is it lazy? Need to budge that over a little bit. Pull that down a little bit. Looks great. That looks great. Yeah. And then I just pop this under my Eureka while it settles. So um, I think it's just one of the embossing folders, which was the Daisy Meadow they oversold on. All of the others should be fine. Now, we, because they did oversell, we did give them what we had to, um, so they would be able to send them to customers. So that means we now have none left. Uh, but I have ordered more, so a couple of weeks. So if you are wanting them, then you can come to us in a couple of weeks. I might do them in HTCN as well. So just, you know, well, I'll make sure nobody misses out for it that way. So hopefully this is stuck now. You, I am loving this card. I'm not showing you. No, it's a secret. <laughs> Nathan's laughing, going, move your hands, move your hands. I will hold it up in a second. All right, let's hop, I'll pop it to the front now. I have to say, this is my best card I've made for a while. Although I enjoyed jelly plate making. Right. How gorgeous is that card? I'll just step away so if you want to get a bit. Now, if you like the wet in wet technique, then you can drop the colour into water if you want to. Don't forget that. That's the glazing with the layers. So you get more texture with glazing. Whereas when you drop colour into water, it disperses and gives you a softer sort of effect. So it is personal preference. And I'm going to talk you through all of those sort of different layers and wet in wet when we do our Saturday morning painting classes because I'm, going to about, I'm about to announce some dates for those as well. So... If you do like the watercolour inside of things, then you must come and say hi on a Saturday morning. It's absolutely free. It's a couple of hours and I get you to paint a cracked egg, which then turns into a beautiful tulip. And this is how we work. You know, nobody's born artist. If I can get you to think about something else that's going to make something else, then we're on to a winner. So I will pop a picture of this one on um, social media as well. So let's just move that one out of the way. So I'm going to call that the blackout technique. Um, if there might be a terminology for it already, although I've not seen it, but there might be a terminology for it. So, and if you've already been doing it, then let us know over on our Eureka fan page. So let's announce the lovely winner. So the fabulous, let's do the card first. So the card from the live studio studio in HTCN, which was this one, if you remember. So you were all loving this one with the heat embossed flowers where we use the alcohol markers on the back of vellum to give you that sort of very subtle, soft colour accent come through them heat embossed flowers. So the winner for this one is a lady called Sandy Gunn. Anybody know Sandy or Sandy is watching? Well done, sweetheart. You have won this card. Just message me over on Facebook on our Eureka fan page or my personal page because that is just craft anyway. And I will get this one over to you. So that's that one. So well done, Sandy. Sweetheart, you've won that card. Hang on one second. Let's have a look. Is there a cause of paint? Would it not work on black card? Question. If there are colours of the paint, would it not work on black card? Well, you couldn't do the coloured leaves on black card because you couldn't paint the watercolours onto black card because you wouldn't see the watercolours. Does that make sense? Am I reading that correctly? Okay, so that's that. So well done, Sandy. And the winner of the jelly plate collection, which is the six by six jelly plate, the lovely, lovely um, acrylic paint. So I put three colours in there for you to play with and have a go, get it straight out of the box. And we have the fabulous brayer as well. So you can get it on that plate. So the winner for that one is a lovely lady called Linda Page. So if Linda's watching, well done, sweetheart. You are the winner of that fabulous jelly plate. Thank you so much for getting involved with the jelly plate. Um, 
I'm not going to call it a debacle because I ended up with some beautiful cards. And do you know what I am going to do as well? I don't know if you follow me on social media, but did you see my watercolour paintings where I did that industrial sort of, like, like as if there was tunnels, not tunnels, like towers and things like that with the watercolours? I think you, we could re recreate that with the acrylics on a jelly plate, you know, like um, put the layers down, put the card on and get that print. So I'm practicing that as well. So I'm going to be doing that as well, maybe on a Saturday morning. I'll keep you all posted on that one. So Linda Page, let me know. Let me know your details, sweetheart, because you have won that lovely, lovely bundle. So if you've enjoyed today's card, pop a comment below on this video when we go off air and I will pick a winner to receive this card that I've made today. Although I don't want to give it away, I will, because I think it's amazing. And I'll pop a little message inside as well. So pop a comment below this video once we go off air. So whatever you're doing, enjoy the rest of your day. If you're with some loved ones, absolutely brilliant. If not, take a walk to the gate, just get some fresh air and just enjoy the day. It is a lovely day. So I will see you all tomorrow at one o'clock for something different. I'm not sure what yet. I will think about it later this evening. Take care, everyone. Bye.